The Zerg are an important dimension of the StarCraft universe, and today we'll discuss their origin, history, biology, and types in this video in detail. What's important to note is that the Zerg share a lot of similarities with Xenomorphs. Both of them operate as well-coordinated swarms, possessing a collective intelligence, or a hive mind, working together seamlessly and in sync. Both have the ability to assimilate other organisms into their own swarms and rapidly evolve while being able to reproduce prolifically on their own, overwhelming the enemy by their sheer numbers. On a visual level, Xenomorphs and Zerg share common influences through the works of various artists like H.R. Giger. Ultimately, the ambush battle tactics of both races and their inherent ruthlessness also draw an element of commonality. Based on their commonalities with Xenomorphs, let us explore the detailed history of the Zerg. Before we get into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Who are the Zerg? Zerg are a race of insect-like aliens that are as formidable as they are merciless. They are a merger of biologically advanced aliens who resemble arthropods in appearance. The mission of the Zerg as a whole is to achieve genetic perfection, and in order to achieve this, they will unrelentingly hunt down and assimilate the useful genetic code of advanced species into their own gene pool all across the galaxy. Zerg are referred to as the Swarm because of the way they rapidly create strains and relentlessly overwhelm the enemy together in sheer numbers. The Zerg are one of the three dominant species of the Milky Way, along with the Terrans and Protoss, but unlike the other two, they lack any technological inclination, per se. The Creation of the Zerg the Zerg are native to a world called Zerus, which is located near the center of the Milky Way. It was one of the many worlds that were seeded with life by a highly advanced and immensely powerful race called the Zelnaga. From the first spawning pool on Zerus, the Zerg evolved from its catalytic fluids. A single essence of genetic information split into many life forms, competing with each other via consumption, until finally giving rise to the first Zerg. This principle of evolution by consumption became fundamental to the identity and function of the Zerg. Amon, the Zelnaga, and the most ancient evil in the universe came to Zerus and became curious about the Zerg due to their genetic versatility and psionic sensitivity, particularly their ability to steal essence. Amon's plan was to stop the Zelnaga's infinite cycle and create a single master race that would end this cycle. In this plan, he saw the perfect role for the Zerg. Thus, the Zerg's evolution was spurred on by the Zelnaga, and they thrived, evolving into parasites that would assimilate the genetic characteristics of its host. They evolved to grow armor-piercing spines, as well as dense shells and very sharp limbs. The Hive Mind of the Zerg, the Overmind. The Zerg, at this point of their evolution, were still individuals, but Amon created the entity known as the Overmind to bring order to the Zerg, as well as to guide them into merging with the Protoss. Thus, the individuality and ego of the unit Zerg were stripped so that they did not interfere with the collective consciousness of the swarm and could be easily controlled. The Overmind was designed with intelligence and the ability to reason, but its free will was always undermined. The Overmind started as a collective representation, only partly sentient at first, of the Zerg's primal instincts and evolutionary drive. Ultimately, it grew into a much more sophisticated entity, absorbing thousands of Zelnaga into itself as well as some sacred Psi-active Kedaran crystals, overall increasing the level of the sentience of higher Zerg strains despite maintaining complete control. The Overmind created Cerebrates as intermediates to control the Zerg Swarm, communicating with them telepathically, and each was given the control of a a specific brood, which are Zerg formations assigned to different roles. There are also overlords as well as queens who provide leadership over minions. Some Zerg, however, were able to escape the subordination of the Overmind, as well as Amon, and were known as the Primal Zergs. Expansion of the Zerg across the galaxy to the Caprulu Sector. The Overmind realized that the evolution of Zerg had approached the limits of their homeworld, Zerus. It was able to successfully lure enormous spacefaring organisms to Zerus and incorporate them into the swarm as behemoths. This allowed the Zerg to be able to breathe in space. At this point, Amon and the other factions of Zelnaga were engaged in war, and the Overmind laid waste to and absorbed thousands of Zelnaga in these battles, and as mentioned before, absorbed the Psi-active Kedaran crystals, growing into an extremely 
extremely powerful entity. Through the absorption of this Zell Naga, the Overmind came to know of the existence of the Protoss, and fully understood its ultimate destiny to merge with the Protoss, which would lead to the destruction of the Zerg. Despite being aware of this, it was capable of disobeying this directive, at least for now. Amon lost the war and was banished to the Void. Despite this, the Overmind continued to follow its directive of genetic perfection of the Swarm, all the while contemplating on what to do about its ultimate destructive destiny of merging with the Protoss. The Zerg Swarm began to grow larger and larger. The Overmind engaged in deep space probes to locate new species that could be assimilated. Zerg probes discovered the Koprulu Sector and located the Terrans there. The Overmind invaded the Sector and was able to capture Sarah Kerrigan thanks to her being betrayed by Arcturus Mengsk. Using Kerrigan, the Overmind would achieve its goal of countering the Protoss's psionic might. This was, in retrospect, the beginning of the Great War, as the Zerg would now have the means to engage in a direct conflict with the Protoss. The Zerg have conquered and infested over a hundred worlds. Apart from their homeworld, the one other that really stands out is Char, which is a volcanic world and the site of many future battles as control of it passes hands, ultimately being usurped by the Zerg under Zagara. Other important worlds taken by the Zerg include Ayer, Tarsonis, Antigua Prime, and more. The next Zerg leader, Sarah Kerrigan, the Queen of Blades. Emerging from the chrysalis the Overmind had put her into, Sarah Kerrigan was now the Queen of Blades. She retained some amount of her personality as well as free will, and this was done by the Overmind on purpose. Despite Kerrigan's heroics, the Cerebrate named Zaz was killed, which left the Overmind unable to communicate temporarily. Having learned the location of the Protoss homeworld, Ayer, the Overmind, in an ultimate bid to disobey its internal directive, engaged in a suicide suicidal mission to invade it. Although it was destroyed, as it knew it would be, the Zerg were able to kill 70% of the Protoss population, forcing them to abandon their homeworld. Thus, the Great War came to an end. The death of the Overmind caused the Zerg Swarm to plunge into a civil war, and the main competition became between Overmind's former right-hand man, the celebrated Cerebrate named Dagoth, and the Queen of Blades, Sarah Kerrigan. This resulted in the start of the Brood War. Dagoth was successful in merging several Cerebrates together creating a second Overmind. Kerrigan psionically manipulated the matriarch Rashigal into killing two Cerebrates. Ultimately, she was able to coerce the Dark Templar Zeratul into destroying the second Overmind. After this, Kerrigan eliminated the remaining Cerebrates who opposed her and gained complete control over the Zerg Swarm. This was how the Brood War came to an end and how Kerrigan established herself as the true Queen of Blades. Kerrigan no longer queen, the Zerg left leaderless. After the Brood War came to an end, Kerrigan as the Queen of Blades started thinking deeply about the inevitable future and how to change it despite all odds. Amon's upcoming cataclysm seemed all but unstoppable. She sought out a Zelnaga prophecy, which was swiftly obtained by the Dark Templar Zeratul before Kerrigan could get her hands on it. The prophecy stated that Kerrigan was essential to defeat Amon, and thus Zeratul and others, such as Jim Raynor, would assist Kerrigan from now on in defeating Amon. The Second Great War began when Kerrigan unleashed the Zerg Swarm against the Terran Dominion in search of the scattered Zelnaga artifact, Keystone, as well as to take revenge against Arcturus Mengsk. The Dominion armed forces were no match for the Zerg, who overpowered them, but the Zelnaga artifact was yet to be found. Not long after, though, a critical joint effort from the Terran Dominion and the forces of Jim Raynor succeeded in using the artifact to de-infest Kerrigan, who returned to a more human form, yet could maintain control of a Zerg. This was a pivotal moment, not only because it resulted in the de-infestation of Kerrigan, but the use of the Zelnaga artifact also led to the resurrection of Amon. The removal of the Queen of Blades left the Zerg Swarm leaderless, and many Zerg broods became independent under their respective broodmothers. Weaker broodmothers were displaced from their colonies colonies and died, while others fled and raised new broods. The Queen returns and takes care of business. Despite being returned to a semi-human form, Kerrigan realized that to defeat the now-resurrected Amon, as well as take revenge against Arcturus Mengs, she would have to use the power of the Zerg Swarm. She entered the first spawning pool on Zerus and emerged more powerful than her previous hybrid form and finally free from Amon's influence. Her control over the Zerg Swarm also became more intuitive. Many broodmothers returned and rejoined as Kerrigan rose back to power. Kerrigan, now the primal Queen of Blades, decided to do two things, kill Mengsk 
and defeat Amon. The swarm converged on Korhal and was initially curtailed by a side disruptor, but the primal Zerg, who were immune to it, led the assault that ultimately destroyed the machine. Having help from Jim Raynor, the swarm was able to break into Korhal Palace, where Kerrigan finally and climactically confronted Arcturus Manx. Manx was able to defeat her using the Zelnaga artifact when Jim Raynor intervened, allowing Kerrigan to finally kill Arcturus Manx. Now, all that was left was Amon. Final target of the Queen of Blades, Amon. At the Temple of Ulnar, Kerrigan frees the Zelnago Uros, who wants to merge his essence with her in order for her to ascend and stand a chance at defeating Amon. She agrees to this and ascends into a new form. She gives the charge of the swarm to her trusted broodmother, Zagara, and thus abdicates from her throne. Using the Zerg swarm to destroy the Void Crystals, she breaches the energy barrier of Amon and confronts him. He proceeds to taunt her and says that she's been manipulated her entire life, but Kerrigan is unaffected by this and says that she chooses freedom for herself and everybody. With this, she delivers the final blow to Amon, killing him and disappearing herself, possibly reuniting with Jim Raynor at some point in the future. The new Zerg Queen, former broodmother Zagara. Zagara is now queen, and according to Kerrigan's instructions, she takes the essence of the Zel Naga at the Temple of Ulnar. She seizes control of the volcanic world Char and launches attacks on the planets Antigua Prime and Bountiful, although her efforts in the end are unsuccessful. She also captures the colony of Jarbin Minor, an unexplored world rich in a particular psionic reagent. A ceasefire is declared between the Zerg Swarm, the Terran Dominion, and the Unified Protoss Protectorate, or the Daylom. Zagara performed a lot of work on a novel Zelnaga-based species and managed to create the Adostra, a strain of Zerg that could passively generate life around them, much like the Zelnaga. During the One Day War, Zagara also manages to uncover a rebellious plot to destroy peace by her evolution master, Abathur, and manages to subdue him, but chooses not to kill him. After defeating Abathur's newly created Zerg strain called the Chitta, Zagara holds peace talks with the De Lom and the Terran Dominion once again. Although Zagara has a peaceful outlook, renegade broodmother Niadra, having the purpose of killing all Protoss, uses her Zerg brood to kill many Protoss in the Battle of Edina, as well as their admiral, Urun. At this point, Queen Zagara is contemplating how to handle the situation with Niadra. Despite these fringe provocations, the Zerg and Terran maintain peace at large. Unique Biology of the Zerg the base unit of the Zerg is the Primal Zerg, whose genome was formed before the creation of the Overmind. The average Zerg deviated from this genomic structure, reducing their physical appearance in order to become more functionally combative. The Zerg excel in reproduction and proliferation, and are very tough as a species. They are extremely resistant to chemical agents, although they are quite vulnerable to several types of radiation. Zerg can operate and breathe in the vacuum of space, but some are adapted for it, like Leviathans, which carry other terrestrial Zerg in space. One on one, an average Zerg is weaker than an average Terran or Protoss, although this could be disputed. Zerg eat and rest, but do not need much sleep. Perhaps most importantly, Zerg don't die of old age. The creep is a unique mechanic and part of playing as the Zerg faction. It marks the areas where the Zerg can build their structures. The creep expands with every Zerg structure that is made, and it is a sentient, living organism. Zerg can burrow, dig, and penetrate through virtually any surface using their tiny muscle groups that vibrate at very low frequency. Zerg excel in ambush situations because of their sheer number and swiftness. They can create rifts into warp space to transport themselves at a speed faster than the speed of light. The regenerative capabilities of the Zerg are often forgotten. Their specific protein structures and combinations allow them to return to full health and repopulate the entire colony from even a single individual. The genetic material of the Zerg is similar to a double helix structure like Terrans and Protoss. They are perpetual mutants whose modus operandi of assimilating genetic material from other species means that its own genetic structure is a constantly changing landscape. The only creatures that the Zerg have failed to assimilate are the Protoss, although they can be artificially combined into a hybrid, as was done by Amon. It is not clear if an individual Zerg is intelligent, although they can be cunning despite, on average, surviving only a few minutes in battle. They react intelligently to attacks and are quite good at tactical combat. 
Zerg communicates psionically, although higher Zerg scans use vocal commands. On a personality basis, however, an individual Zerg is a unique entity with no concern for self-preservation, unlike most other organisms. The quest for genetic perfection is almost a religion for Zerg. It's hardwired right into them. Overall, Zerg are akin to a slave race which can be weaponized by the right leader. When the Queen of Blades wielded power, she became the ultimate controller of these Zerg. Post that, Zagara now decides where and what the Zerg swarm will do. When left without a leader, feral Zerg attack everything in sight, and can even cannibalize each other. The adaptability of Zerg on the battlefield is also one of their greatest assets. Zerg Units in StarCraft There are various types of Zerg that are present in many StarCraft games. This is a comprehensive list of them. Zergling. Zerglings are the most basic Zerg units, spawning two at a time, making it easy to build a huge army with them. Zerglings are quite fast, but do not have much health. Individual units are weak, but large groups can surround and terrorize the enemy. Hydralisk. Hydralisks are versatile Zerg units with better health than Zerglings. They have fast attack and deal high damage, effective against both air and ground enemies. They can morph into a lurker and are the only Zerg ground units apart from the Queen that can attack aerial enemies. Hydralisks are often paired with high health roaches. Ultralisk. Ultralisks are huge land units with great armor and health, dealing extremely high melee damage. However, they can be quite slow and can be hit by many targets. Ultralisks can be very powerful against the Protoss if used in the right way. Drone. Drones are the primary worker unit, like that of bees, and generally mine resources or build buildings. They're frequently used for scouting. Defiler. The Defiler has no attack, but can cast various spells, like one that casts a cloud over a small area, creating invulnerability against ranged attacks. Its plague attack has a damage of 300 units, killing any unit below that health. It is a ground-based offensive support unit. Lurker. The Lurker is morphed from the Hydralisk. It burrows beneath the ground and shoots huge spikes. They are almost undetectable underground. Overlord. The Overlord is a flying unit that, with proper upgrades, is also able to carry other units. It is the Zerg's supply generator. They can also be morphed into Overseers. Overseer. The Overseer can detect invisible units as well as spawn units. They are very useful for scouting and detecting enemy positions. They are faster than the Overlord, but cannot transport units. Changeling. Changelings are timed units that are spawned by an overseer that last only 150 seconds. Upon seeing an enemy or building, they will automatically transform into the basic unit of that enemy's race. Thus, it's the perfect unit for infiltrating enemy territory. Mutalisk. The Mutalisk is the primary Zerg air unit with good damage and fast attack against both air and ground units. It has the ability to morph into units such as the Guardian or the Devourer. It has a bouncy attack, but has low health. Guardian. The Guardian morphs from the Mutalisk while in a cocoon, in which stage it can be attacked and it will resist damage. It is a long-range siege unit used to hit only land structures, but its high damage per hit makes it popular. Queen. Queens are essential to support units, being spawned from any hatchery post the construction of a spawning pool. They provide moderate defense against both ground and aerial threats, although its AI prioritizes aerial units while attacking. Queens have several abilities, the most powerful of which is spawning larvae that can turn into many types of Zerg. Queens can also enable Zerg players to extend their creep. Scourge. The Scourge are aerial Zerglings spawning two at a time and best for use in a kamikaze attack. They are very easy to amass into a large army. Devourer. The Devourer is a morphed aerial unit mutated from the Mutalist, which is birthed from a cocoon in the sky. It can release damaging acid spores and is a strictly air-to-air -air unit. Baneling. Banelings are kamikaze units morphed from Zerglings after the construction of a Baneling nest. They have significant splash damage and do a lot of destruction against buildings. Banelings can be manually detonated. Roach. A roach is an armored ground unit that can absorb large amounts of damage but has a slow attack. They're cheap to produce and can also be morphed into Ravagers. Ravager. Ravagers are ranged ground units that morph from roaches. They're not armored and are thus much faster but with less health. Ravagers can also launch corrosive bile at large distances. Larva. The larva is the base unit for Zerg and can morph into various types of Zerg. They are very durable and spawn naturally from a hatchery, lair, or hive. A cocoon is created when any morphable zerg has started mutating into another unit. For instance, a cocoon is created when a larva morphs into a type of zerg, or when zerglings morph into banelings, and so on.
Locust. The locust are short-lived parasitic symbionts that are spawned from the millions of larvae inhabiting the bloodstream of the swarm host, which is a particular zerg strain known as the egg monster. Originally melee units, their stats were changed such that they gained a ranged attack that could target air units. Swarm Host. The Swarm Host is a Zerg siege unit that attacks using locusts, burrowing into the ground and providing a seemingly endless supply. They are ground units that move slowly and have a timed life. Swarm Hosts are particularly powerful against the Protoss, and they are often used in defensive maneuvers. Nidus Worm. The Nidus Worm is a Zerg structure that is used to move units swiftly across the map. One common strategy is to use Changeling to infiltrate an enemy base using a Nidus Worm. After the Nidus Network, a Zerg building is built, a Nidus Worm can be created anywhere the player has vision. Infester. The Infester is an offensive unit capable of casting spells. It has a very good range of vision and can be used to cast powerful spells that can even take control of an enemy unit. It can also cast a newly added spell called Microbial Shroud, creating a cover that obscures ground units from attacking air units. Infested Terran. Infested Terran are light ground Zerg units that are spawned when an Infester casts the spell called Infested Terran. Both the spell and unit were removed and replaced by Microbial Shroud. Corruptor. The Corruptor is a flying Zerg unit that is swift and deals good damage against aerial units. They have good range and health and can morph into the formidable Broodlords. Broodlord. The Broodlord is a heavy assault Zerg that spawns Broodlings. The Broodlord is able to supercharge the aggression and metabolism of Broodlings, turning them into temporary but powerful weapons that it can spawn continuously. Broodlords are the only unit to gain an attack bonus from both melee and flying attack upgrades. Broodling. Broodlings are small Zerg units that spawn when most Zerg buildings collapse or via Broodlords. They have a limited lifetime of less than 4 seconds, after which they will die even if they still have health. Broodlings can be used as powerful weapons, capable of tearing through armor and attacking in near constant supply. Viper. The Viper is a flying Zerg unit that uses spells to disrupt the positioning of enemy units. Among its many spells, it can target a unit and pull it to its location. The Viper is an evolution of the Mutalisk and is particularly effective against clustered armies. Marvelous Verdict The Zerg have left a lasting legacy on the StarCraft and video gaming universe. Players who choose the Zerg faction enjoy overwhelming their opponents in large numbers and then adapting to a strategy based on the enemy's response. The concept of genetic assimilation and perfection is something that intrigues a lot of players, as does the incredible and grotesque visual design that invokes both horror and awe. Many of the Zerg have become iconic characters in video games, such as the Queen of Blades. In general, the competitive nature of playing with the Zerg faction has sustained interest in its origin story and lore. Their similarities to Xenomorphs, as mentioned at the start of this video, has generated cross-interest across various franchises in popular culture. Overall, the Zerg are an important entity in the StarCraft universe and video games as a whole, and we hope you have had fun exploring them in detail in this marvelous video. If you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, have a good one, and be safe out there.